Hello to all my second form Latin students. Um, we're going to meet this way for a while. Hopefully it won't be the rest of the year. I hope that in a few weeks all of this will be passed and we can get back together in person. But until then, I will provide these each week. I'm hoping to have these posted on Monday of each week that you can uh, go to them, see them. Uh, when we left before spring break, and uh, before we knew we were going to take the extra week off, I had you do the unit review. Uh, we have two unit reviews. We have the unit, no, I guess that's the first form Latin students. So we had done lesson 20 and 21, and you were on the unit four review. This is on pages 64 and 65 of your student book. Now I sent an email out to all of your parents encouraging you to go ahead during the previous week and do the unit review. I don't know if you all were able to do that or not, if you all did it. Uh, so we're gonna proceed uh, as if it, we're gonna give you an extra week for everyone to get on the same page and get caught up with each other just in case someone did not finish that. Carter and Nate, you do not have the answers to the unit review. You also don't have the answers to the previous two lessons. So by the time you are watching this lecture, you should have been emailed the answer key to the two lessons that I had you do before break to the unit review. The first thing I want all of you to do is check your unit reviews and please get back to me. As the rule is always when we're together in class, if there's anything you miss and you don't know why you missed it, you don't know what you're doing wrong, please get a hold of me. You can either email me or just give me a phone call. I'm not going anywhere. Everything's closed. I'm going to be home. Uh, if I've stepped out to the chickens or something, I will call you back as soon as I get your message. And we can just talk it over in person. I'll look it up in my book and I'll, and I'll walk you through it. But the first thing I want you to do this week is make sure you finish the unit review. I have also emailed each of you the unit four quiz. Just like the other ones, this is a closed book quiz. I want you to uh, get to the point where you feel like you're ready to take it, put all your books away and take it. I'm also going to have emailed you the answers Actually, let's think about that. I will email you the answers to the quiz next week, just to, just to keep you honest, uh, so that you can check that for yourself and you'll know where you are. I don't put grades on them anyway, um, but if you miss something, I would really like to know about it. Um, maybe you could call me, uh, unless it's something that's obvious, uh, it was singular and you made it plural, something like that. I think that for the duration of the time that we're not able to be together, I'm going to go ahead and have you do the weekly quizzes. I'm going to send those out each week just so that you can know that you know the material well enough to move on. This is going to be a bit of an honor system thing, but I think you could all can handle it. If you don't know the material, you need to learn it. Um, so, so if you've gotten the unit review done already and all you have to do this week is take the quiz I've sent out. Here's what you can do with the extra time. Go back through the entire second form book, review everything. Review all your vocabulary, nominative and genitive and gender of all nouns, all principal parts of all verbs. Make sure you know them. Do verb synopses on your own. We're gonna do one here together on the whiteboard in a minute but do them at home and check yourself. You know, all the different conjugations of verbs are conjugated for you in the back of your student book. Check yourself. The better you know the material, the more fun Latin is moving forward and the easier it is. And especially for those who, of you who are considering going ahead and taking another year of Latin with me in the Wheelock's Latin book. This is a good thing to do to make life easier for yourself later. We're not gonna have any trouble finishing the book in the rest of the, the year, we have seven more weeks after this. It's not going to be a problem at all. So we can afford to take this week. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Make sure we've all got the unit review done and all taken the quiz. And next week, we'll move on to the last unit. So what do you need to know for the quiz? Just like always, they make it very easy for you. Everything on pages 64 and 65. All the vocabulary. 
How do you make a question in Latin? We're going to do some sentences together uh, here on the whiteboard in a minute to review both ways to make a question. All the principal parts. This unit has covered basically two things, the questions and the perfect system in third and fourth conjugations, which we discovered to our great joy is exactly like the perfect system in first and second conjugations. You go to the third principal part of the verb, you drop the I, and you stick the endings on for the perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect tenses. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and do a synopsis together just to review what are our helping verbs that we use for each tense. I don't think we can do this too many times. So let's, let's run through one together. Okay, I'm gonna move over a little bit to make room for the whiteboard. Let's do a third conjugation verb together. Um, let's do duco. Principal parts of duco. Duco. Ducery or duchery. Duxi. Ductus. Remember, they, uh, third conjugation has crazy principal parts, but they made it easy for you, as easy as they could, by giving you groups of verbs that have similar principal parts. Uh, use that to your advantage as you as you say them, as you learn them. And also say them out loud, write them as you say them over and over again. And eventually you will not just learn that rego means rule, you will learn rego, regory, rexi, rectus means rule. And it will just come out naturally in, in a group. Okay. Let's do duco in first person plural, which you know is we. Okay. Let's do it in present, imperfect, future, perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect. Okay, here we go. Let's conjugate duco in the present tense. Duco, ducis, ducit, ducimus, ducitus, ducunt. So we have ducimus or ducimus. What does it mean? We lead. We are leading. We do lead. Okay. Imperfect. Duke bomb, duke bas, duke bot, duke bombus, duke batus, duke bot. Duke or duce, bombus. We were leading. Okay, future. You remember the joke. It is an old maid because it has no bows in its future we change the stem vowel for a third conjugation. So we would conjugate it in the future. Ducam, duques, duquet, duchemus, duquetus, duquent. So we have duchemus or duchemus. We will lead. Okay, now perfect system. Just as always, we go to the third principal part, drop the I, and that's our stem. All right. For the perfect tense, our endings are I, isti, it. All right. So here we go. Duxi, duxisti, duxit, duximus, duxistis, duxerunt. So duximus. We led. We have led or we did lead, okay? Pluperfect, this is where we stick the eram, eras, era endings on. So here we go. Duke seram, duke seras, duke serat, duke seramus, duke seratus, duke serat. Duke seramus. We had led. Okay, last one. This is when we put the ero eris erit endings on. 
Duxero, Duxeris, Duxerit, Duxerimus, Duxeritus, Duxerint. So Duxerimus. We will have lead. Okay. Easy enough. You guys have done a lot of these by now. This should be getting pretty easy for you. No surprises in the perfect system, but you do have to learn those pesky principal parts. By the way, let's, I'm going to take this away. Let's review the standard principal parts for each conjugation. Just one more time. The, the model uh, parts. For first conjugation, let's use amo, principal parts, amo, amari, amavi, amatus. This is the standard form for first conjugation. You only know four of them that are different. Sto, do, uvo, lavo. All right. Second conjugation. Let's use monio as our model verb. Monio, monere, monui, monitus. Standard second form. Now, there are more second conjugation verbs that are a little odd, that don't follow the, the standard format, but not as many as in the third or fourth. So, you know a lot of these. Terio terere, teriui teritus, habio habere, habui habitus. It has a little song, it has a little rhythm to it. Okay, third conjugation, unfortunately, there is no model third conjugation verb. You're on your own. But like I said, they grouped them in the book for you by like forms. So we had the ones that are all like. Duco, ducri, duxi, ductus, rego, regory, rexi, rectus, that have the X in the third principal part. They, they tried to make it a little easier for you by grouping them, but we do need to memorize those. Fourth conjugation does have a standard form. We'll use audio for this. Audio, audire, or audire, if that helps you remember that it's an I. It's an E there. Audivi, auditus. All right, standard fourth. Again, I think venio, invenio, and sentio are a few of the irregulars that you learned, but most of the fourth conjugation verbs you learned are regular. Okay, like I said, use this opportunity when we are not meeting and when we're taking a little slowdown for a couple of weeks to, to review everything. Also review your first form vocabulary as well. Don't, don't forget about that and all your sayings, your weekly sayings as well. Okay, let's get down to going over some uh, sentences together. If you want to give them a try on your own, I'm going to write the sentence on the board. You could just shut the video off and see how you do on your own and see if you can come up with the sentence on your own. Um, and But then I'm going to walk you through each one and we're going to translate it together. We're going to do a few questions, but let's just start out with some simple, plain sentences. Victoria Erat Brevis. All right, let's look at the verb. It's Eram Eras Erat. It's the be verb, and it's imperfect. So it's he, she, or it was. What was? The victory was brief or short, okay? That's an easy one. Notice the endings don't look the same, but you're used to that by now. They're both nominative, they're both feminine, and they're both singular. So we have a match. Next up. Femini errant. Pigrai. Errant. It's ero, eris, erit, erimis, eritis, errant. It's the be verb and it's the future. They will be. Who will be? 
the women. The women will be lazy. All right, next one. I gotta look over here. Oh, here they come. You knew the cows were coming. Vake Fidelis. Ursas Asperas Fugerunt. All right. Let's start with the verb. Fugo. Fugo means flee. Fugo fugri fugi fugitus. Fugi is the third principal part. So this is actually a perfect tense verb because it's got the third part. It's got the it is to it, it is to say runt, so it's, it's perfect. They fled, or they have fled. Who? What could be the subject? Right? Well, I look up here. This is a subject ending, a plural subject ending. So is this. The faithful cows. The faithful cows fled. What did they flee? What did they flee from? We need a direct object, and we have direct object endings right here. Bears, the harsh bears. Now, technically, there's no reason why Fidelis couldn't go with Ursus, because this can also be an accusative feminine ending. But first of all, I intended the cows to be the faithful cows, and it just seems like a little odd if the bears are harsh and faithful. So, but if you if you translated it that way, I couldn't technically say you were wrong grammatically. All right, let's try. Oh, let's do one more regular sentence. Chives. Misery Leges or Leges Patriae Nesciunt. Okay, we have Nesciunt. Nescio is fourth conjugation, it's just present tense. So they do not know. Who could be the subject of this sentence? <clears throat> well, she base is a subject ending. Leges is also a subject ending. But the laws do not know. That doesn't really make any sense. How about the citizens? The citizens do not know. That makes sense. What kind of citizens? The wretched citizens or the miserable citizens do not know. What do they not know? Now we need a direct object. The laws. And we only have one word to deal with. We've got several choices for that ending. Ah, a, a, um, ah, a, arm, is, assist. Okay. We know it's not this because we already have a subject. So it's got to be this or this. If it were dative, that would make it an indirect object. The laws for the country doesn't make a lot of sense. But how about a possessive? the laws of the country. That makes sense. So let's go back and do the whole thing. The wretched citizens do not know the laws of the country. Okay, let's take a look at questions now. We've learned two ways to make a question. The first way is just to use a question word, a word like who, where, when, how. And let's, let's try a few of those. Quis vicit. Right. It's always easier to start with the verb. And so we have vinco, vincri, vici, third principal part of conquer. So he, she, or it conquered. Quis is who. It's going to be our subject. Who conquered? Easy enough. Let's try another one. Quando... Dominus de 
Dicebat. Let's start with the verb. Dicebat. Dico means say or speak or tell. We have a bomba spa ending that makes it imperfect. He, she, or it was telling or was speaking. Who is doing the speaking? Well, we have Dominus that has a subject ending. The master was speaking. Quando means when. So now we have to turn it into a question starting with when. When was the master speaking? Notice how I use the same helping verb. Dico means was speaking, the dikebat. So I need was to be the helping verb in my question. When was the master speaking? Let's try another one of those. Quote, vacai sunt in silva. All right. Start with the verb, sunt. Sum es est, sum es est sunt. Present tense be verb, they are. Who could be the they? The cows. The cows are in the forest. Quote means how many. So now we have to turn the cows are in the forest into a question starting with how many. How many cows are in the forest? All right, simple as that. Like I said, translate it without it being a question first, then turn it into a question. Okay, let's do one more with a question word. Cur feminae chenam faciunt. Start with the verb. Facio means make. Or do, let's use make. Facio, facis, facit, facimus, facitis, faciunt. It's present tense. They are making. Who? Who could be the they? Femini has a subject ending. The women are making. What are they making? We need a direct object. Dinner. The women are making dinner. Cur means why. So now we need to turn it into a question starting with why. Why are the women making dinner? Okay, I used are as the helping verb because that's the tense of my main verb. Okay, so that's, that's the first way you've learned to make a question. The other way, let's do a couple of sentences like this, is to stick nay on the end of the first word of the sentence, which in this case is going to be the verb. Now, verbs usually come at the end of a sentence, but it was customary to stick the verb at the beginning for a sentence and stick nay on the end. So let's do a couple of these. I wrote these not as, as questions, but I'm going to turn them into questions. Okay. Dix erat nay. Femina pulcra parvis liberis longum fabulum. This is a long sentence. Okay. But first we're going to treat it like it's not a question at all. We're going to find our verb. Dixe rot. Dico, dicori, dixi. It's the third principal part. And it's got the eram, eras, erat. So dico means tell or say. Let's use tell in this case. He, she, or it had told. All right. Who could be the he, she, or it? Femina. The only thing it can be is a subject. Femina pulcra. The beautiful woman had told... Okay, what did she tell? Now we need a direct object. Let's look, let's look for something with accusative endings. I see them down here. The beautiful woman had told a long story. Now we only have two words left. 
They could be ablative, but we don't have a preposition. The other thing they could be is dative. And that makes sense because who got told the long story? Who, who received the long story? The small children. All right, so let's do it as not a question. The beautiful woman had told a long story to the small children. Now we need to change the whole thing into a question. We need, remember this means she had told. So we need to use had as our, our helping verb when we turn it into a question. Had the beautiful woman told a long story to the small children. All right, let's try one more. That was, by the way, that was much longer than anything that they're going to give you in the workbook. If you can follow me through these and you can work your way through these, you're fine because these are, these really give you a workout. Okay, let's do one more. Trax eritne rex malus servos terpes kirkum provincium okay we're going to start with the verb trox a reet troxy is the third principal part of traho traho trahery traxy tractus draw or drag let's use drag it's got the ero eris erit ending on it, which makes it future perfect. He, she, or it will have dragged. Now we need to look for who could be the he, she, or it. Rex can only be a subject. The bad king will have dragged. Okay, we need a direct object. What is he dragging? We have a direct object ending here and an adjective that goes along with it. Shameful slaves. The bad king will have dragged the shameful slaves. Kirkham. Kirkham is one of our prepositions. Just like the word circumference, it means around. And it takes the accusative. And by golly, lucky for us, we have a noun and the accusative right after it province around the province let's put it all together the bad king will have dragged the shameful slaves around the province okay remember this is will have dragged now let's change it into a question will the bad king have dragged the shameful slaves around the province all right. The hardest part of that step is making sure you keep the same helping verbs, that you keep the same verb tense when you switch it around into a, into a question. Carter, sorry, no throwing out of windows or knives this week. I'll see if I can do it next week uh, for you ladies on Mondays. Um, I'm sure you'll love that, but I have a Wednesday student who likes to throw things out windows and throw knives at people. We'll see if we can come up with some of those sentences for next week. Till then... I want you guys to finish up the unit review if you haven't already. Check it. Contact me if you miss things and you don't know why. If you have any questions about your Latin whatsoever, email me or even better yet, pick up the phone and call me. Like I said, I'm here. I'll be glad to get my books out and talk about it with you. Do the quiz. Check the quiz. If there's anything that you miss that's just, you just don't understand why or what you've done wrong, I want to walk through that with you. Follow the directions. Those of you who have forgotten to give me principal parts or genders or if they're asking you for the infinitive form, make sure you do that. It's good practice to follow directions. And till then, uh, like I said, get back to me if you have any particular questions. If not, I will have another lecture on the following lesson posted next Monday, and we will go into the last unit of the book. And congratulations on all you guys have learned so far. Don't give up now. Keep at it. And hey, 
You can't go anywhere. Everything's closed and canceled, so use the extra time to brush up on your Latin and get even better at it. All right, I'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.